guys, here we are again. Hey guys! In beautiful Kailua town. What you got, honey? Um, mint chocolate chip ice cream. Ooh, organic mint chocolate chip. I'm not sure what that means. Uh, Less calories. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. This is a big thing of chocolate chip. It's two by two. See, yeah. two spoons. Two spoons. One ice cream, but a big ice cream. Let's try this. Organic, okay. organic, see. It's a little um, commercial for Whole Foods. Not too sweet, not too rancid. <laughs> Just right. <laughs> Actually, it's pretty on -off. Yeah, it's good. Hey guys. <laughs> so we're here to talk about the two by two ministry. Yes. And so what that really means is that you need two people, maybe two spoons and an ice cream, if you want to. Right. But right. it's really about accountability and having a partner that you can meet every week with. It doesn't have to be your husband and wife, it can be two nope. best friends, girls, guys with guys, girls with girls, and um, our youth with youth. But it's a time to kind of do a heart check with each other. Yeah. See what's been going on, time to journal. Time to ask some important questions that keep us on track. Yeah, and that's the benefit. The benefit is that, you know, we keep each other accountable. That's right. And, um, you know, we can pray for one another. Mm -hmm. Actually, it will also cause you to get into your word and maybe even share your journal or what God yeah. is doing in your life. So we're going to do this um, actually in our church, church-wide. Um, so, but that's we're right. offering this not only for our church, but everyone two by two ministry you know that's right. get with somebody get accountability and just live out in faith together that's I think right. that's the you know, it's the awesomest thing that we could have that's together right. talk so, about what God's doing in your life and um, help encourage one another in that walk yep yeah. anyway share ice cream two, two by, by two, two. Cheers. ministry see you later be the wave we be love the wave. you aloha Yes, this is what happens when you give your pastor a selfie stick. So Corona and I have a selfie stick ministry. And uh, while we were away on the big island, uh, actually she picked it up at Target for $5. She said, honey, I got a selfie stick. And how does this work? But anyway, it just turned into something that it's, I think it's really cool. Because we're just like going off of whatever, you know. It's just what God is just speaking in our hearts at the moment. And we feel like we want to share. And um, uh, you're going to be seeing more of that stuff from us. <laughs> anyway, how you guys doing? All right. Last week we were talking about how to get rid of frustrations. How, how was your week? Was it a frustrating week or yours? Pretty good. Pretty good? All right. Well, today we're going to talk about turning disappointments into victory. Turning it around. And again, there's a lot of issues, and uh, let's just open up with a scripture that uh, we're going to be reading all month, Ephesians 4, 25 and 26, okay? Would you read with me? Ready? One, two, three, go. Be angry and do not sin. Do not let the sun go down on your wrath, nor give place to the devil. And we talked a little bit about that last week, that man, you can't go to bed angry, Amen. I mean, that's one of the worst things you can do is go to bed angry because in the morning, you're going to wake up worse than ever because that's the mo one of the most influential times spiritually when you lay down to rest. Amen? And also, I talked about the misconception about anger. Most people think that Christians are not supposed to get angry. No, it says be angry, but do not what? Sin. So I can be angry about abuse. I can be angry about certain things. But the point is there's a line that is drawn with the Lord according to his word. We cannot sin in that anger. Amen? So we're going to just do a little review because I, I you know, um, I feel like we want to just get this ingrained. We talk about getting rid of frustration. So I, I mentioned this this week, but I made it into a point. So write this down. Frustration leads to anger. And anger leads to what? Sin. Write that down. There's a psalm that I shared last week. When you are angry, here's the thing that you can do. <clears throat> psalm 4, 4 to 5 says, Be angry and do not sin. 
meditate within your heart on your bed and be still. Offer the sacrifices of righteousness and put your trust in the Lord. Again, now when you go to bed, say go to bed. All right. When you go lay down to sleep, the thing you should do, meditate on is the Lord. Amen. Offer right uh, sacrifices of righteousness. Give that to God. That's the place I had mentioned to you. There's sometimes, well, not sometimes, every night when I lay to bed, you ask my wife, she'll hear me say, oh, Lord, help me. <laughs> oh, Lord, I give you glory, Lord. Offer sacrifices of righteousness. Give it to God because that's the place where God, you can reconnect. He can minister you, minister to you in your sleep. Amen? Amen. All right. Here's another point and I, I touched on last week is this. Don't expect people to meet your every expectation. Write that down again. If you're frustrated, how you get rid of frustration, the thing that you have to do is don't expect people to meet your every expectation. Make every really big on your paper. All right? Your husband is not always going to meet your expectation. Amen, women? Men, your wives aren't going to meet your expectation. Your children is not going to meet your expectation. Your family, your aunties, your uncles, your co-workers, your boss, they won't meet all your every expectation. Amen? And neither do we meet God's expectation. Amen? Because God expects us according to his word. There's a standard. But the Bible says in Romans 3, 23 and 24, read this with me. Ready? One, two, three, go. For everyone has sinned. We all fall short of God's glorious standard. Yet God in his grace freely makes us right in his sight. He did this through Christ Jesus when he freed us from the penalty of our sins. Again, we don't even meet God's standard. We, don't, we can't even meet that. But a lot of times we want people to meet our standard. Right? What does God, well, what does he say when we don't meet his standard? He gives us what? Grace. He gives us grace. Therefore, when people don't meet our standard, we should give what? Grace. Amen. So now this point is meant to, for those who want to, are maybe frustrated or want to get rid of that frustration. Start to kind of turn your thoughts and look at things differently. That my brother or my sister or my children, they can't, they're, they're missing it right now. Amen? But, here's the thing, here's the but. Say but. Look at your neighbor and say but. <laughs> All right. There's a lot of buts in the Bible. You know that? There is. A lot of buts in the Bible. Okay? Here's the thing. Maybe you're on the other side and you're the person not meeting that expectation. And you are, not you are now causing maybe that person to be frustrated. Okay? This here doesn't give us or me the right that I can just do what I do. Amen? Right? It doesn't mean that, look, look because I don't meet an expectation, well, then I, I don't have to try my best. No, we should try to meet expectations. Amen? God has standards for us, and we should try to meet the expectation, even if he gives us the grace. It's the same in a home. Family issues. It's the same thing, all right? All right, there's expectation that needs to happen. My children, my wife wrote a list of things on the refrigerator, and there's things that they need to do. There's expectations that we, they should try to meet the best they can. Amen? Husbands and wives, friends, coworkers, and so forth. Amen? All right? So, therefore, it doesn't give us license that we can just do what we want to do. Okay? So, there's two sides. For those of us who have expectations, and then there's those of us who don't meet the expectations. Amen? We got to try our best. Amen? How do we reconcile all of this? How do we know? How, how can it, what can we do to help us make sure we're trying our best and reach those expectations? Well, here it is. Write this down. In everything, look at your neighbor and say, in everything, please the Lord Jesus Christ first. Okay? In 
in everything you do, you got to please the Lord first. If there's an expectation at my workplace, and my boss says, this, here's an expectation, or my wife, how I reach that, how I attain that, or how I'm going to look at that, is I'm going to make the Lord first. Amen? All right? I'm going to make him first. Here's a scripture that kind of sets all these expectations in accordance with the Lord. It says, wives, submit to your husbands as, it, as is fitting for those who belong to the Lord. Husbands, love your wives and never treat them harshly. Children, always obey your parents, for this pleases the Lord. Fathers, do not aggravate your children, or they will become discouraged. Slaves, this pertaining to work. Obey your earthly masters in everything you do. Try to please them all the time, not just when they are watching you. Serve them sincerely because of your reverent fear of the Lord. Verse 23, read this with me. Verse 23, one, two, three, go. Work willingly at whatever you do as though you were working for the Lord rather than for people. Okay, amen? Amen. All right, so this kind of puts a lot of pressure off, right? Because you're doing your best, you're focused, and you want to please God. Amen? We want to please God in our relationships. As a husband, as a father, I want to please God. So I need to make the Lord, I need to please him first. And how I do that is do what his word says. Amen? Amen. The Bible says, my soul waits silently for God alone for my expectation is from him. He only is my rock and my salvation. He is my defense. <clears throat> I shall not be moved. And God is my salvation and my glory. The rock of my strength and my refuge is in God. Trust in him at all times, you people. Pour out your heart before him. God is a refuge for us. Amen? All right, so kind of review on frustration, anger. So what happens when we get frustrated, <laughs> and what usually happens in my home, I don't know about you, or in my life, frustration, anger, sinful anger, then comes disappointment. Look at your neighbor and say disappointment. Look at someone else and say disappointment. Disappointment is like a dark veil that overcomes you and covers the joy of the Lord. Disappointment is something that saps your energy and enthusiasm to do anything. Amen? Disappointment just, you lose energy and fight. You ever heard the term, I kill fight? Right? You want to give up. Disappointment is like that. I see it like this in regards to disappointments. Disappointment is an appointment for opportunity. Amen? This, okay, local. <laughs> Disappointment. Get it? Okay. You guys kind of, kind of getting there. Disappointment is an appointment. When you're disappointed, it's an appointment for opportunity for God to move. Amen? All right? So how many times have you been disappointed and that's where we stay? All week, all month, years. Amen? But this appointment is an appointment for opportunity, for God to move, for you to have growth in the Lord. Amen? Everything that challenges you, a disappointment, is an opportunity. And you have to change your thinking. You have to change that thought. Amen? I want you to take a moment and write down your disappointments. You're going to have to go on the side somewhere. I want you to write down, or on the back, write down... Your disappointment or ments, whatever that is. Write that down. Take a moment. 
It could be by persons, alphabetical order, by priority. <laughs> it could be even about yourself. How do we turn this disappointment around into a victory? How do we do that? What do we need to do? Look at your neighbor and say, are you ready? Come on, encourage somebody. Look at somebody and say, are you ready? Look at somebody you love and say, are you ready? Okay? Seriously, if you're ready, we're going we're gonna to do this together. Because we have a good, good father. We have a good, good father. How we're going to turn these disappointments around is this. Number one, you make God bigger than your disappointment. You make God, almighty God, the most powerful God in all of creation, the universe, bigger than this disappointment. All right? Not saying that God isn't bigger, because he is. God is bigger than your disappointment. God is bigger than those frustrations. God is bigger than all of that. Amen? And think about the worst disappointment you ever had. I got a whole bunch of them. I have a list. I went through Celebrate Recovery CR. <laughs> I didn't realize a list of disappointments I had in my life. <laughs> Thank God. But the point is that you have to see God as bigger than those disappointments. Amen? It's a matter of your soul. Say your soul. The matter of your mind, your will, your emotions. It's soul. The battlefield is in your mind. The battlefield is in your soul. Amen? And your soul has to make God bigger. Amen? Stay with me now. Your soul has to lock in to God. As your target. Say your target. You say, I got to lock into God as my target. You got, I love, you know, those, uh, <clears throat> the type of military um, weapons we have. They have these missiles, right? You know, it's either you in a plane or a jet or whatever. And you can fire these missiles. Well, before you fire, you can lock in, right? You've seen it. They lock in and they say, fire. <laughs> It's like you have to lock into God and fire, okay? And what happens is when you fire, well, a weapon would blow up and destroy. But what you're going to do is lock into God and you're going to blow him up and make him bigger. You know what I'm saying? Blow him up. We're going to make him bigger, larger than your disappointments, amen? Amen. God has to be the target. You, you got to declare that. You have to say, God, you're bigger. You know what's coming to my mind right now? And I think about my daughter, and she has a condition. And her condition is this. Every once in a while, for whatever reason, there's a condition that one side of her body will be paralyzed for three, five seconds. When she's walking or talking, she goes, ah, I can't move this one side. And I remember how devastated I was. And I wasn't showing that. I wasn't projecting my, my disappointments, my frustration, my fear. But the thing is, when you go through something that is difficult in life, when you lock into God and you lock into him and you make him bigger because he is bigger. You don't have to make him, but your soul has to. You get it? Your mind has to. You have to declare that you are bigger than this, Lord. That my daughter is going to be fine in the name of Jesus. Amen? And that's what we got to do. We got to lock in, make God bigger, and magnify. It's a turning point. It's a turning point for you. Psalm 34 says, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in, in my mouth. There it is, declaring, my soul shall make its boast in the Lord. You are awesome, God. 
The humble shall hear of it and be glad. Oh, what does it say? Magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. People, your soul needs to be a spiritual magnifying glass. Okay? Your soul needs to be a spiritual magnifying glass. That when you put that up to God, you're like, whoo, you are a big, good, good God. You're a big, good, good God. And there is nothing that's going to bring me down. Amen? And nothing can. All right? And what happens with this spiritual magnifying glass, and we all have it, what we tend to do is we magnify the, what? Disappointments. Amen? Don't we do that? Right? As soon as you're disappointed, what do we do? We take that spiritual magnifying glass, which should be magnifying the Lord, and we magnify the problem. We magnify the disappointments. We magnify the frustration. We magnify the person that hurt me. We magnify the person that's talking about me. We magnify all those things. We're good at that. You see, it takes just as much energy to magnify this and to magnify the Lord. Amen? Just as much energy. That's how much energy it takes. You want to magnify this? Or you want to magnify up here? Amen? That's how we begin to turn the disappointments around. It's a turning point. And when we do the opposite, no wonder we lose enthusiasm. No wonder we have no strength. No wonder you feel weak and you feel dark and you're not joyful. You don't have happiness because everything is magnified on every problem or everybody else or everybody's situ the situation. Amen? Rather than magnify here. Hey, I'm just the messenger. Look at me. I'm just the messenger this morning. Amen? I'm just a messenger. The Bible says in Psalms 42, 11, says, Why am I discouraged? Why is my heart so sad? I will put my hope in God. I will praise him again, my Savior and my God. There it is. There it is. You can ask yourself that question. Why am I down? Why am I beat up? Well, I will put my hope in God. I will praise him again, my Savior and my God. Amen? When you find yourself losing enthusiasm, you're feeling darkened by the veil of disappointment, it's time to turn it around. Give it to him. Start magnifying him and say, God, you know what? You're bigger than this, and I, and I trust you. See, that's where we start growth. Amen? Amen. So, that was number one. Now, number two is going to help number one. Okay? Here's number two. You ready? Number two, fill your mind with the word of God. Look at your neighbor and say, fill your mind with the word of God. <laughs> I probably could have made this number one and the other one number two, but we went this way. Fill your mind with the word of God. What are you filling your mind with? Are you filling your mind with disappointments? Are you filling your mind with all the things that you cannot do or you haven't done or people haven't done for you? What do you have to do? How you turn it around, you fill your mind with the word of God. All right? We do this this way. Read scripture. Fill in the blank. Very obvious. It's an obvious answer. Easier said than done. For most majority of believers who profess that I believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. That's a salvation part. That's the part that... Wow, that's his grace. He's a good, good father. But if we want to overcome things in life, if you want to overcome these disappointments and discouragements, the reading his word will help you with number one, to make God bigger. Amen? Amen. And that's the thing we're going to start within our church. I'm going to teach next week. Two by two. You're going to find someone that you're comfortable with and 
I'm going to have some questions. I'm going to have some things for you to read if you don't have anything to read. And you're going to encourage one another. It's a, it's a point of uh, resetting your heart and your mind and your soul. Amen? Next point is listen to Scripture. If it's difficult for you to read, a lot of times, well, most, a lot of times, I just, everybody have a smartphone or a dumb phone? <laughs> Who has a smartphone? Everybody has a phone. So there is no excuse that there you can get the Bible on your phone. Amen? Okay, so write this down, BibleGateway.com. You can go on the internet if you want. And you can find the scripture that you're going to read, and I'll probably pass out a whole bunch of scriptures that you can read to start with if you don't have a reading plan. Okay? And when you go to work, I plug it in, I put in the verses, and I drive and I listen to scripture. Amen? What does that do? What, is it? what are you filling your mind with, your soul, with the Lord? His word, it'll fill you. It'll encourage you. And those disappointments and those discouragements begin to start to fall away. Amen? All right? Read his scripture. Here's a meditation of his excellent word. It says, your lamp is, your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. I have sworn and confirmed that I will keep your righteous judgments. I'm, affli I'm afflicted very much. Revive me, O Lord, according to your word. Again, it's about his excellence. His word can revive you. All right? So what's the number one? What's number one? Make God bigger. What's number two? All right. Number three is build your God-fearing support team. Write that down. Who's your support team? And I put God-fearing, meaning people that love the Lord, people that have the same desire as you to learn and to grow in the Lord. Amen? Because if you have a non-believer, this is a particular team. We've got all kinds of teams in our lives. I have a team at work. I work with a team at work, okay? I have a team, and we work together, and we get people ready for surgery, and we recover them, and we have a good team. We have to work out the team. But I need, and you need, a spiritual team, okay? We need a team to help us, to encourage us. We need a team to give us hope. We need a team to build us up, amen, and to challenge us, all right? Read the scripture with me. Hebrews 10, 23, 24. Ready? One, two, three, go. Let us hold tightly without wavering to the hope we affirm, for God can be trusted to keep his promise. Let us think of ways to motivate one another to acts of love and good works. And let us not neglect our meeting together as some people do, but encourage one another, especially now that the day of his return is drawing near. You've got to build your spiritual team. Build your team. And maybe you're sitting here and was like, wow, man, I don't know. We can start with the two by two. We start with two by two. Let's look at some ways of how. Who should be on your team? Number one, let Jesus be the captain of your team. All right? The Lord has to be at the center of your support system. Amen? Jesus has to be the ultimate leader. That's the one you lean on. He's the captain. And if I have someone that I'm, um, is my two-by-two two partner, we are in agreement that our Lord is the team captain. Amen? <laughs> it's awesome. It's so awesome. I've been, I've been testing this out with another brother in the Lord in our church and just testing and see what that is like. And it, it, I have learned so much just in a few weeks of how this works because Jesus sent his disciples out two by two. Think about it. Two by two. That you're not alone. Amen? So, <clears throat> let Jesus be the team captain. The next point is church attendance. Look at your neighbor and say church attendance. Look at somebody else and say church attendance. Okay. I want you to think about this. The Bible says don't neglect the gathering of the saints. 
Why don't you think about it? It's important because you can't build your team without going to where the team players are. Amen? All right? You can't, you can't be out in the world on your own without, you know what I mean? You, if you want, need a team to support you, you need to be around the team players. You need to be around team players that are rooting for you and want to be with you and want to grow with you. Amen? It's very important. I want to talk about marriages and relationships. See, every marriage needs a team. Amen? Every relationship. I, as a husband or a father, need other men to help, help me. Same with the wives. And even if you're not married, we need one another, even as singles, to, to bear one another up. Amen? That's how the church is going to grow, from the inside out. Amen? Inside out. So church attendance is really, really important. Once you make that priority, you watch what God's going to do. You watch. Amen? The next way of doing it, I've just given you practical ways, is home group. Home group. If you're not in a home group, join one. And if, if it's too far or out, we can, you can help start one. Say, come up to me and say, Pastor, how do I start this? Well, on the bottom of your notes, there's questions. Hey, let's just find some people and let's just start this. We can help you. Amen. So today is an encouragement for you. So it's not just a Sunday thing, that it's an everyday thing. Amen. It's an all weeker, right? <laughs> it's every day. We're not just coming here on Sunday and going, okay, we're going to sit down and listen to Pastor. All right. No, man, that's not what God wants. He wants us to move and grow and cry and laugh together all the time. Amen? Amen. Okay. And then the, um, the last one is serve with one another. Man, you, you want to build your support team? Maybe you don't even have a two-by-two. Two, but if you just start serving, you say, you know what? I want to help. I want to help Joe back there, you know, put away some of the chairs at the end of service. Guess what? You're building your support team. You're building your support team, right? You know, Akimo can probably do a teaching on it. <laughs> but yeah, you build a support team because you're serving now. You're rubbing shoulders with the team players. Amen? You guys heard the word that we should be all what? Team players. Amen? We are better together. We are better together. All this, these areas of how to, to build your team has one thing in common. They all one thing in common, the Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord Jesus Christ. Church, he says, we are the body of Christ. We are his body. Amen? Home groups, this is how we serve, how we minister to one another. Service, be in ministry. Amen? So number one, make God bigger. Number two, fill your minds with God's word. And number three, build your God-fearing support team. Amen? And make Jesus the purpose, the number one leader in your team. Amen? Amen. Let us pray. Let's just get with the Lord right now. Why don't you just search your heart and your thoughts and want you to think about the disappointments that you may have had or maybe even going through right now. You're not alone. And the one thing that will change, the beginning of change again, is turning your heart to the Lord. It's not to me. It's not to a religion. It's not to the ideas. But it's really turning your heart back to God. And resetting your heart on who He is in your life. And how he sees you 
as his son or his daughter that he sees you as his precious son and daughter he sees you as his child and like a father a good good father oh man he knows where you have stumbled he knows where you have fallen down flat on your face even have hurt yourself he knows the predicaments and the things that may have caused hurt in your heart and your life and as a good good father he wants you to know how much he loves you and how much he cares for you and he wants you to know that you can go to him freely I mean free I mean free without any religion or without any other expectations of what we sometimes as Christians put on people you can go to him free and he's made that way because he sent his one and only son to die on a cross for you and I'm feeling in my spirit I'm feeling in my heart that God is saying come to me The Lord is saying, come to me all who are weary and I will give you rest. You don't have to hang on to that. You don't have to carry that anymore. Turn your heart to me. I will open up heaven for you. I will open the way for you. I will come and give you peace which surpasses all understanding. And if that's you this morning and God is speaking in your heart and you need that. And if you're struggling with what I'm saying. I just encourage you to let go. Just let it go. And if that's you this morning. Every eye closed, every head bowed. And you need his peace. You need him right now. And you want to turn and make the Lord your target right now your heart if that's you slip up your hand on the count of three here we go one two three go ahead slip up your hand keep it up keep it up I'm keeping mine up I'm with you no one looking around just you and God just slip up your hand slip it up I'm going to, God's telling me to hold on and wait so I'm going to wait I'm going to wait I'm going to wait You need peace. This is your point of I'm lifting up my hand to you, Lord God. Just come in agreement with this prayer, congregation, and those who lift up our hands. Lord, I come to you right now and I declare you, Lord Jesus, in my life. Lord God, right now I declare, Lord, that my disappointments, my frustrations, the magnification is now on you, Lord. I turn my heart, I turn my focus to you, Lord. And I magnify you, Lord God. And today, right now, those troubles that are, are behind me, Lord. And today, Lord God, I pray, Lord God, that your Holy Spirit, the power and the anointing, would begin to wash each person. Wash each person. Wash all the junk wash all the hurt wash all those things Lord God just begin to seep down into the cracks of our hearts and in our souls Lord God to begin to wash it all away Lord God that we will be pure in you Lord pure in you Lord God and just nothing left but you Lord God only your truth Lord God because we only want to stand in your truth that you love me Lord God and you're there for me Lord God and you're you're going ahead of me. You're my rear guard, Lord God. And I'm going to make it with you, Lord God. I'm going to be able to go beyond these disappointments, Lord God. And I'm going to shine for you, Lord God. Because you are a good, good God, Lord God. And today, Lord God, I declare you as my Lord and Savior in my life, Lord. 
And Lord, I pray your precious covering over each person here this morning. Cover our church, Lord God. Cover our families, God. Cover those who are not here, Lord God, to hear your word, Lord God. We pray, Lord God, together in agreement, Lord God, that there will be a mighty move as we begin to apply your word in our lives, Lord God. As we begin to be with one-on-one, two-by-two, and sending us out, Lord God, to do your work, Lord God. Oh, Lord God. We honor you. We praise you in the name of Jesus. And all God's people said, amen and amen. Somebody praise the Lord. Come on, let's give it up. Let's give a big shout. Make God big. Come on, let's make him big. Make him big. Yeah. Woo. All right. Man, so. Okay, three things you need to do. Number one, go tell somebody, go share with somebody. Amen? Tell somebody and share with somebody. This week or even today after service. All right? I'm going to challenge you after service. Five minutes, go to someone and speak with them. Five minutes, go to someone and just introduce yourselves and get, get to know them for five minutes. Number two, here it is. Come back next week. <laughs> Look at your neighbor and say, come back next week. All right. All right. Be outreach minded. Go share with somebody you love. Because, man, this is good stuff from the Lord. I'm just the messenger. Amen. Amen. Number three, every day, say every day, every day, just give glory to God and make him your target. Amen. Make him big every day. Make him big every day when we wake up in the morning. Lord, you're a big God. You're a big God. Amen. Somebody praise the Lord.